Hi, and welcome back to Planning Your Picture Book. Today we are going to talk about what do you do after you've made your dummy. And hopefully you've made your dummy. So at this point you should have something kind of like this with all of your sketches, your whole story figured out. And it can be a little intimidating to try and figure out what you should do next. So the best thing in my opinion is to set yourself a goal of finishing perhaps two spreads from the book and then maybe perhaps your cover. Um, and once you have the dummy, two finished, two finished spreads and a cover, you would be ready to show that book to a publisher or an agent or anyone else you might want to share your book with. Um, if your goal is just to make a book, you can go ahead and start at the beginning of your book and work your way through each piece until you've created the whole book. Um, that's really up to you how far you want to get into this process. But um, for me, I generally do two spreads in full color and then I plan out a cover. So we're going to talk about the first part of that today, which is doing the two spreads. And then next week we'll finish up, talk a little bit about covers and we'll move. That'll be the end. <laughs> um, so how do you get from your dummy to finished work? That's going to be different for every single person because it really depends on how you work and your process. So if you work digitally, that might mean scanning in your sketches, painting digitally, and you're done. Um, if you're like me and you work um, not digitally, analog, I guess, um, you're going to have to do a little bit of playing around with getting it all set up before you paint. So the first thing I recommend is make sure you know what your page sizes are going to be and that you have your bleed lines figured out so you know you know exactly how big you want to make your final pieces. Um, one thing you should keep in mind is that generally artists work larger than print size. Um, so if my book is going to be 8 by 8 inches, I usually like to work at 125%, which I use a calculator, that's 10 by 10 inches. Why do I want to work bigger? Because you can always shrink it down, um, but you can't always make something bigger. So if you work bigger, you have more options when it comes to resizing and also generally things look better when they're bigger and then shrunk down, uh, your details look better. So working bigger is always a good idea. Um, I want to show you my process step by step. Uh, so I am going to switch my camera in a second, um, but I do want to tell you, I use my computer to resize things, resize my sketches, make them bigger. If you don't have that, if you don't have a scanner, like a traditional copy machine, like at the library, would be the way to go copied at 125%, even if you have to kind of tile your piece together because it doesn't fit on one piece of paper. Um, and then you'll sketch it onto, you know, bigger paper. So I am gonna take one of my pages, not the two page spread. So also when I paint, I only paint one page at a time. I don't generally paint the whole spread because that would be too big and difficult for me to scan. So instead I break up each page. So I'm gonna take one of my pages, I'm gonna show you how I go from this to real art. So I'm gonna switch my camera and I'll show you that. See you there. Okay, so here we are. Um, I have sped these clips up, so this is much faster than I normally work, but in this part you're seeing me take my sketch and put it onto the watercolor paper that I use when I do final art. So I'm using my light box. This is a really inexpensive light box. You can get something like this on Amazon for like $20. And it plugs into a USB port, perfect for transferring sketches. Now you're gonna see me just mark out the edges of my paper. So remember I was working 10 by 10 but then I put a quarter inch on each side just so I know I've got extra. And I keep these lines really light, really important because I don't really want these to show up. And if they do, then I gotta clean them up and remove them. So um, there's the top of my head. 
<laughs> I'm just really marking out my borders quite lightly so that I know where I have to paint to. Um, now you're seeing a blank board because I'm actually soaking my watercolor paper, um, walking to the sink, running it under water, spilling water all over the floor. And here it is. Uh, now I'm going to use some tape. This is a water color paper tape. It's activated by water and I'm going to put that on all four sides and that's going to stretch my paper and make it perfectly smooth so that I don't have issues with buckling. And one thing about my process is there's a lot of working and waiting, working and waiting. So I'm going to do this and then I have to wait about um, 30 minutes till it dries and I know it's dry because the paper will be totally flat when I come back so you're gonna see my camera stop in a minute and that's going to be dry and I'm gonna be ready to paint just like that I'm ready to paint oh wait not yet this is me um, spreading the paper out sorry spreading the water out so that there aren't any spots that don't have water on them then I'm going to let it dry there we go Nice and smooth, ready for paints. There's my palette, a little bit messy, not gonna lie. And I'm gonna start painting. Um, one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're painting is that if you're using a certain color for hair or for the frog, you might wanna take note of what colors you use so that when you come to doing it again on another page, you use the correct color. So that might mean making some little color studies or even um, writing down which number, which mixtures you used for certain things. Um, I did not do that for this piece. I didn't make any color studies because I had a kind of mental image of what I wanted to do, um, but it's always a good idea. And remember this is sped up. I'm not actually painting this fast, but uh, I'm just trying to get all my big colors blocked in as I work and my process I do watercolor first and then I do black pencil black colored pencil over the watercolor and I allow it to dry in between so this first layer is really just color covering most of the white paper and then I come back into it which you're going to see here in a moment but I'm really just filling in and at this point my paper probably still had a little moisture in it um, I can tell because of the way the watercolor is moving, it's getting a little blurrier. So my paper was probably not 100% dry, but I'm okay with that for the look that I'm trying to get. Um, depending on what you like, you might want to let your paper dry more, but this was working for me. And so yeah, you just see me here putting in my layers of color. Darkening up Mr. Froggy there trying to keep it really loose. I like my work to look loose and a little bit sketchy. Uh, everybody works differently. So if you don't want that kind of look, you work the way that you like to work. And um, this is a color that I use a lot and I really like it <laughs> for, for hair and for flesh tone. Um, it's sort of like a burnt sienna color. And again, if this was a book I was working on, I might make some notes that I, this is the color that I'm using for the hair, um, just so I know that I'm consistent with it as I work throughout. Um, so I know that the brown for the hair versus the brown that I use on the dog, um, just so I can make sure I paint it the same way every time. And at this stage, I'm not super concerned with details because I put in my, um, my line next and then after the line, I'll do little tiny details to finish up the work. Um, you can see my brush was a little dirty, so I didn't like that first layer I put down. So I grabbed a paper towel and just undid it. Always good to have paper towels when you're watercoloring so you can fix little boo-boos, just pick them up. I also will often uh, put down a color and then pick it up 
and just especially like with the cheeks like I'll put it down really dark and then I'll pick it up with white paper towel real quick um, and you can see over on that edge there I'm painting I use the corners of the paper to test colors a lot that's a pretty pretty common thing for me to do um, the right hand side there uh, would be the gutter of the book and you can see I've left some space there because I'm going to do the other side and I might want to have them drawn together when I do the other side. So I've left a little bit ambiguous on that little uh, right hand side there. All right, here I am going in with my pencil. I got my sketch and this is kind of the fun part for me. I love doing the pencil lines. I try to make them expressive and interesting and to me that the work just comes alive when I start doing the pencil. I have my phone there because I was looking up uh, what do frog nostrils look like. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely check stuff like that sometimes as I work. Um, yeah, this is definitely my favorite part of working on an illustration. And uh, you can see with my process, I work all over at once. And uh, so I don't just like finish one part and then move to the next part. I work all over until I get things the way I like them. Um, and I just, I guess I came that way from coming, from coming from a painting background. That's how you work when you paint. Uh, I like to work all over and, and not finish one thing entirely and work my way all around. Um, I've left a lot of empty space on that left hand side, um, where it's all greenish yellow because there would be text there. So that's why that doesn't have any detail. Uh, the eyes and the mouth are really important to me uh, to really try to get them right because if I mess them up then I have to redo it. <laughs> I have to a lot of times fix it in Photoshop if I mess that up. So here I am just putting in details using my red colored pencil, black colored pencil. Yeah, I wanted some decoration on her bonnet so use my colored pencil for that. Um, I can layer color pencil and watercolor so you can kind of work back and forth as long as the watercolor is dry you can uh, do all kinds of layering with it so just putting more little details in with my pencil and then I'll probably come back with some paint I'll work back and forth, back and forth, pencil, paint for a pretty long time until I get it the way I like. Yep, so now I'm back to painting. Details. Again, I work all over the place at once. <laughs> I want to add a little more hair under her bonnet, darkening up, adding some depth in different areas. I decided to darken the frog a little bit so he stood out from the background. For me, this is a fun process because I get to just build it up as I work from, you know, really big shapes into more and more detail as much as I want to do. wanted to add some little fancy plants in the background. <laughs> I love painting leaves and, and uh, grass. They're like two of my favorite things to paint. So that is about it um, for how I get to final art. Your journey might be different, but um, I'm so glad you came and watched me today. <laughs> I hope this was informational for you and it was really fun for me. So see you next time. Bye-bye.